let's talk about what a contribution margin is in the context of accounting. So let's say that you decide you want to make bicycles and you rent out some space. This is your building where you're going to build the bicycles and you build your first bicycle and you have you have to buy some parts right so those are the, the input your labor and and then of course these parts that you use to make your first bicycle and then you sell this bicycle you sell let's say sell for three hundred dollars you sell this bicycle for three hundred dollars and you say okay well how much were these parts how much did it cost uh, how much actually went into the bicycle so let's say that the parts were a hundred and twenty five dollars of parts right so then you say okay well I sold the bike for three hundred and then I have to deduct this hundred and twenty five in parts right so you take that out and then you have a hundred and seventy five dollars uh, is the difference there right so basically this is what it cost you to make the bike and then this is what you got for the bike and then this is what's left over so $175 um, is not, although it might seem like it's your profit, it's really not because remember you had to rent a building here, right? So you've got this and this is a fixed cost, right? And it's fixed because no matter how many bicycles you choose to make, uh, you, you still have that, that fixed cost here, that building. So what is this $175 then? Because it seems like it's a pretty useful number even though it's, it's not our profit because we haven't figured in fixed costs yet. Well, this is our contribution margin, and I'll just abbreviate it CM. So the contribution margin is basically after you take the sale price and deduct out all the variable costs, right? So the, the parts for the bicycle are variable in the sense that the more bicycles you make, the more parts you're going to need, right? So you just take, just take the sales price or the sales revenue amount for, for a company, deduct the variable costs, and that's going to give you the contribution margin. And the reason that that's useful, this contribution margin number, is this is telling us, okay, uh, this is what we've accumulated in terms of th something that we could put toward these fixed costs or toward whatever leftover profit that we're intending to have, right? So let's, let's actually take a look in terms of a, an income statement. So traditionally, when we think of an, an income statement, we think, okay, we've got got sales then we subtract out cost of goods sold that gives us a subtotal of a gross margin and then we'll have some operating expenses or some other items down here and the bottom line would be net income right now we can also set up the income statement and we can call it a contribution uh, income statement so I'll just put contribution I'll abbreviate there so our contribution income statement we're gonna have sales but now instead of kind of breaking it out like this, we're actually going to say a minus a variable cost. And I'll just abbreviate that VC. So let's say that the sales were 100000 for this company. And then the variable costs were 30000 Now we're going to have, instead of a subtotal of this gross margin, uh, we're going to have a subtotal of contribution margin. Let me, let me change. Uh, we'll put that in yellow. Contribution margin. And that's going to be... $70,000. Now, what does this mean? This means that after producing these units, right, after incurring the variable cost for each unit, we've got $70,000 left over to cover our fixed costs. And once we've covered those fixed costs, any of any of this that has covered the fixed costs and then we've got some extra, that goes toward our profit. Right, so this is what's left over to cover fixed costs and possibly go to profit. So now, if we keep uh, putting together our income statement here, the next thing we would have is fixed costs. Right, and so let's say that the fixed costs are forty thousand dollars. Okay, so then that's going to leave us with a net income. Change here again. Net income. I'll just abbreviate net income of thirty thousand because we just subtract out those fixed costs. Now you see here, it's it's basically the same firm. Right, we got net income thirty thousand each way, so it's not like we're changing anything economically about what happened. We're just organizing uh, the income statement in a different way so that we can see, okay, what is our contribution margin? And then this this seventy thousand, we see, okay, well the forty thousand of it goes toward covering the fixed costs, and then there's thirty thousand of that contribution margin left over, and that's where our profit is. So if we just and I'll just briefly, we'll have the equation. So when we think about contribution margin. It's just going to be very simple. It's just we take the sales or revenue number and then we deduct out our variable costs. Uh, and now contribution margin is going to be very important when we go on uh, in future videos and, and talk about things like calculating 
uh, the break-even point. So break-even point, we can say, okay, well, how much will we need in sales uh, to in order for our firm to break even and not lose money? And then we could even go go further and say, okay, well, let's say we wanted to have a target profit of a certain amount. Let's say we want to have a profit, a net income of of uh, seventy or eighty thousand dollars. To get that target profit of eighty thousand uh, dollars, what would our sales need to be? And we need to know our contribution margin in order to figure these things out.